uh, I don't think I have anything to add after ha having listened to likes of uh, Professor Stein, Anna Lawson, Peter Blank, Dr. Deshpande, and Paul, ha ha Paul Harper. Uh, but I think I will fail in my duty if I don't raise few issues. Already we are running uh, late, so uh, I will I will try to be as brief as possible. But my speech can be found on the blog. I think uh, this summit has taught me to be very uh, disciplined. So uh, I think very rarely it has happened that my speech has gone to the blog before even I have spoken. Uh, but anyway, uh, let me let me ask this question. Uh, when I when I heard Dr. Deshpande or Anna, uh, we have problems in class. Okay, disabled teachers have problems in class. But which teachers do not have problem in class? But the non-disabled teachers do not have problems in class. So why we have to be uh, overly ableist in claiming uh, that only uh, we have to be extra uh, extra uh, cautious in 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 avoiding the problems uh, in the class, right? So I I, I personally uh, believe uh, that you know uh, our problems are unduly highlighted when we face problems in the classroom. Those problems are unduly and disproportionately highlighted in comparison with problems faced by uh, the so-called other teachers. So I think that has to be uh, taken care of. Let's uh, let's accept that students are students and teachers are st teachers. Even as a student, I was also not teacher, right? Uh, that is the first response uh, I want to uh, have uh, to the so-called uh, problems uh, in the class of uh, the uh, uh, disabled teachers. My uh, my second uh, uh, point, my second point, which I want to make is about deconstruction of public law. Uh, I'm, I'm deeply disappointed and appalled by the fact that all major handbooks on public law, it, uh, American constitutional law, British constitutional law, Australian constitutional law, hardly any handbook, and it is produced by likes of Oxford University or Springer, none of these handbooks have a even a chapter on uh, uh, disability rights, as if uh, disability rights uh, has nothing to do with public law. Therefore, it is important to deconstruct public law. And as, an, as a disability academician, I always make it a point to, uh, to deconstruct uh, uh, a public law. Just to give one example, one of the provisions under Indian constitution says that if a, a judge of a high court or a judge of a high court or Supreme Court can be removed, on the ground of physical incapacity. I have to ask myself, if, should I go run off mill and explain to my students, okay, if somebody uh, becomes disabled, then he has to be removed. Is, is it not a run off mill critique of law? Should I become more, uh, uh, more structured in my critique? And should I tell my students that this is medical model of disability? You are trying to locate disability of a person in his body rather than locating it in uh, 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 social structures, discriminatory structures of the society. So I personally believe that as a disability academician, uh, our job is to abandon this, uh, the so-called runoff mill, this, the runoff mill critique of law and take a more nuanced approach and engage with law uh, on uh, on terms which are which are emancipatory to the uh, to the to the existence of the disabled, right? Uh, so I've done a paper, for example, critiquing the constitutionalism around the world, critiquing the provisions of the constitutional constitutions of uh, uh, several countries. Uh, for example, I have problematized the notion of unsound mind. I mean, what do you mean by unsound mind? Why the notion of unsound mind still perpetuate and be endured by the constitutions around the world? Uh, friends, uh, I'm more interested to uh, hear uh, uh, Sandra Friedman and uh, uh, she engaging with uh, the galaxy of scholars. I'm too junior to uh, take uh, the time of the audience. Uh, so therefore, I would stop here. But I would request all of you to please read my speech on the blog. Thank you very much.